Welcome back to another Jeff Reviews for you. And as you saw, we are going to be installing a tankless water heater. I actually did a lot of research and I settled upon the Ream brand. This is their 18 kilowatt unit and it retailed for right around $460. You know what? Enough talk. Let's get right into this review. Of course, here we are on box. This is what our Ream tankless water heater looks like this is the 18 kilowatt version i know i mentioned that earlier all there was was the unit and a set of directions on the inside i want to walk you through my install and this is not necessarily a how-to this is just how i did it now i did consult with a plumber and an electrician to one make sure it was sized for my electrical box as well as sized for the house you should do the same thing so you can figure out exactly what unit to get for your house. Before we continue on, let's go over a quick parts list. I needed, of course, to buy the tankless water heater. Then I had to buy my two double pole 40 amp circuit breakers. Then I had to get my wire and of course, all the fittings and connections and pipes. Total for me was right under $1,000. Say that your inlet and your outlet valves are on the bottom. So when you plumb your system, you have to make sure you plumb from the bottom up. Also right here next to the inlet outlet is where your electrical line will go in. Also in the box is the cap that will go on at the very end. So don't forget to set this aside. You might miss it all together. This particular unit is just over 18 inches tall, 14 and a half inches across and three and a half inches deep. To take off the cover for installation, there's two screws on the bottom and then two screws right here on the top. So take all four of those off, put those aside, and we can take the cover off. Of course, with the cover off, we can see on the four corners that we have our spots that we have to mount our tankless water heater to. Now I should say this did not come with any screws, so you have to get your own screws for the install. Also on the inside, you notice these two cylinders in the middle. Those are actually your heaters or what's gonna heat your water when it's on demand or when you want it. This part over here is where our electrical components are gonna be attached. So let's install this up on our water wall then run some plumbing. I forgot to mention earlier, one of the main reasons I picked this brand is because both the inlet and the outlet are made out of brass. And when I looked at some of the other units, they're made out of plastic and that worries me as a potential breaking point. Also, when I just took the caps off, water poured out. And so that means they just tested this in the factory. So don't be surprised if water comes out when you take the caps off. My next step is installing the water supply lines. And I just picked up these things that they recommended. Of course, you see that I put Teflon tape on there, even though there's a rubber gasket on the supply line i still use teflon tape just something i use as a precaution i forgot to shoot this earlier i wanted to show you some trouble that i had initially putting in the water line i use this type of braided connection and i don't think this braided connection likes to be bent at all because i had a slightest little turn in it and it just leaked from underneath here and it just frustrated me i couldn't get the leak to stop so i went up and got one of these shark bite pieces and i do love shark bite they're quick and easy although expensive and this piece screwed right in i was able to bend it and connect it and we're on our way. We've run our electrical lines through the house, as you can see, and they come up and around and they get screwed into these terminals here. So you notice that I have the black on the right side and that corresponds to the black that's with the actual water tank. But then I have a white wire just cause that's what was in my set of wires and that connects with the red. The same thing for terminal two, black goes in with the black line here and the white line goes in with the red. And then of course I've tied in my grounds right to this ground post. Whenever you're dealing with electricity, it's important to know if your lines are live or not. I know mine are not live because they're not actually hooked into the box yet, but still it's important to test. I just use one of these simple inexpensive of electricity detectors where if you touch a live wire, it'll beep. These ones, of course, are not live. So there you go. It is time to hook up our two 40 amp double pole circuit breakers. And so I wanted to show you what it looked like on this end. You can see I've loosened up this screw. So I left an opening here. The other side I haven't opened yet. I'm gonna install my black wire here on the right side and my white wire here on the left side. Then of course the ground will go to the neutral bar and then we can install these officially. If you don't feel comfortable doing this on your own, make sure you consult a professional. I wanted to show you my final setup. I couldn't get it to fit in landscape, so I put it here in portrait. You can see this inner line is the line that feeds our hot water tank or our water tank, and I have a shutoff here just for service. So what happens, the water comes in, goes around through those two heating elements, comes down, out, and to the house. Of course, you can see the electrical lines that are coming in as well. Overall, I'm pleased with how the install went. I will say if I started with this original coil, I would have had the cold come in one side and the hot go out the other. I just think that would have looked nicer, but I'm gonna leave it the way this is now. I think it works exactly how it should. 
So tell me, what are your thoughts of these tankless water heaters? Something that you would use? Do you have one? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Right here from the box, you can go all the way as low as 80 degrees Fahrenheit and all the way up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. You can also turn it off from right here and of course, right back on. If you like Celsius and you turn it on, oops, and hold, and it turns it to Celsius. Now to turn it back to Fahrenheit, you put it on and hold. Now that we've set ours to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, let's go test it out right at the faucet. Before we start with this test, I should say that this unit was installed in central Virginia. So that's your geographical area. So if you are in a different place, your results may be slightly Different. Also, the directions tell us not to exceed 40 feet as a run from your hot water tank to your furthest sink or shower or whatever. Mine are only within like 25 and this sink is actually within 15. What I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna fill this up with just cold water to get a temperature and then we're gonna run the hot water. As you can see, we have about 52 degree temperature and that's in Fahrenheit of our regular water coming right out of the ground. What I'm gonna do is I'll drain this we're gonna run the hot water to see what kind of temperature we get there. My experience has been it takes about 15 to 25 seconds before I notice that the water is getting hotter. Just so you're aware, I'm gonna let that run for a little bit before filling this up. Like I said, I let it run for about 20 seconds before filling it up and you can see we're about 120 degrees Fahrenheit right here and it's slowly rising. I do wanna see if it ever will get to the 140 they have it set at. I was getting about 130, 132 in the water, so I decided to run it under the actual water spout, and it is getting up to right now at 136 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm pretty impressed with that temperature. In this video, we were doing a DIY or an installation of a tankless water heater from Ream. So what's I think? But first things first, I did this out of necessity because a recent storm knocked my old hot water tank out. And I've been wanting to upgrade to one of these tankless systems for a long time. So off video, I ended up building a wall and of course running some of the plumbing to make my installation possible here. When everything was prepped and ready for me to start, it took about two hours to do the entire install and that was hooking up the fittings, running the electrical, putting the fuses in the fuse box and after collaboration with a local plumber and electrician, I set on the 18 kilowatt unit. My house has three bathrooms in it and this unit says you can run up to two showers and a sink at the same time. Of course that depends on your water temperature. My electrical box only had space for the two 40 amp breakers so I knew that's where I was unless I wanted to upgrade my box. So after collaborating with an electrician and a plumber, this is the unit that I set on and I've been pretty happy with it. I really do like how lightweight and convenient this is to install. You can almost put it anywhere. You know what though, if you are going to be installing a different size unit, make sure to refer back to your directions because each unit calls for a different breaker size, maybe even wiring. So make sure to double check there. I do appreciate how easy it was to adjust the temperature all the way up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's pretty hot. I'm going to lower mine to right around 125 when all said and done, but I think it's cool how quick and easy you can edit or change your temperature. I don't look at this as a typical DIY, although it was pretty easy to install. If you feel comfortable doing these kind of things, always make sure you do safety first. If this is something that interests you, I will leave a link down in the description. Also, I will leave updates down in the description on how things are going for me. This is Jeff with Jeff Reviews for You. As always, thanks for stopping by and I hope you have a great day. You can see when someone uses the water, this changes to an E5 and then shows you the temperature that you have it set for. You can see, of course, we have it set for 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Otherwise, the screen is just blank when not in use. I really do appreciate that you stayed around for my entire review where I installed my very own tankless water heater. You know what? Not that long ago, I actually installed another plumbing product and that is the under the sink filter. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link that right up here and I would love it if you would click on this link. And when you do, by the magic of the internet, I'm gonna join you at that review. So go ahead, click it, it's safe, I promise.